faces. Good morning, those watching by Facebook. We're so honored to have you today. And uh, you know, as I always say, we're ready to receive from the Lord this morning, aren't we? Amen. Because God has something for each and every one of you today, each and every one. If we'll just reach out and that we will just uh, draw to Him, draw from Him today from His Spirit. He is the perfect Lamb, isn't He? Yes. He is the perfect Savior. He has done everything that He can do. He's already been to the cross. He's already taken the stripes. He's done everything that He can do for everything to cover our lives, whatever yes. we have need of today. And so we lift him up today. Amen. Yes, yes. We lift our praises high unto our Savior today. And we draw from him. We drink of the well today, don't we? Amen. 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 Everything that he has for us, we want to receive it today. Just yes. take it in because he's already provided it for us. Praise God. Amen. So just yield to him. Just come into his presence today. And just receive what he has for you. Amen. Amen. Let's all worship the Lord with all of our hearts today. Because he is worthy. He is the worthy yeah. lamb today. Amen. Amen. So this time we'll turn it over to Patty and the praise and worship team. Praise God. Amen. 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 Give my hand.
this with me this morning. Father God, Father God, God. draw us, draw us into, into a depth, a depth of, your presence, of your presence like never before. Like never before. Draw, us, draw us, Father. We need you. We need, you. We need to hear from you. We thank you for everything. For everything good is from you. So we shout thank you this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. We don't know everything here, but we are not playing church. Huh. The Lord is good and he is he is drawing us and he wants to teach us how to rest in him and how to flow. And that's his desire that we flow and we will be bright lights. Not just something dim where somebody said, I thought I got, got, a, got a glimpse of a light. No, no, no. He wants us to shine bright so that someone can be drawn to his presence that maybe doesn't know him or that maybe is in desperate need of his righteous hand coming down to hell. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
holy God. Amen. Give me my shout.
lift up our Father in heaven. So at this time, we are going to take our tithes and hands, and we're also going to speak over our tithe. And here at Oasis Christian Center, uh, Wanda brought up something, and she said, you know what, we're not going to give God what's left. We're not just going to look at our checkbook and say, well, I got a little bit more this week, so I think I'll give a little. No. Well, you know, someone gave me a gift, so I guess I'll, I'll toss something in the plate. No. We're not going to give God what's left. We're going to give him the first fruits, because that's where God began. He gave us his son to die for us so that we could have life on earth and have life eternal. So, we're not going to give God what's left. We're going to put our tithes in our right hand, and we're going to do what's Amen. right Amen. by the Spirit of God. Amen. That's how we do it, is through the love of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All right, speak after me. As I tithe and give offerings, as I tithe and give offerings, I believe and I receive. I believe and I receive jobs and better jobs, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, raises and bonuses, benefits, benefits, sales and commissions, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, estates and inheritances, interest and income, interest and income, rebates and returns, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail. Checks in the mail. Gifts and surprises. Gifts and surprises. Finding money. Finding money. Bills decreased. Bills decreased. Bills paid off. Bills paid off. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Blessings and increase. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For meeting all my financial needs. For meeting all my financial needs. That I may now have. That I may now have. More than enough. More than enough. To give into the kingdom of God. To give into the kingdom of God. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. And here at Oasis, we have several ways that you can give into this good ministry here at Oasis Christian Center. It is Oasis Christian Center, a family church. Post Office Box 246, Smith Station, Alabama, 36877. You can call the church mobile. You'll get Ish on the phone, and that is 334-520-7538. He can get you some of these postage postage paid envelopes, and that's an extra blessing. And then you can reach us at paypal.me forward slash Oasis Family Church. Text to give at 334-274-7885, acionlinegiving.com forward slash 4832. And here we are, oasisfamilychurch.net. If you forget all of this, you can go to that site and it will show you ways to donate. There is also the Cash App, and that is a dollar sign, Oasis Family Church, and no spaces. All right, we're going to have our ears tuned up, Amen. getting them unclogged right now. We hear the voice of God. We hear the move of the Holy Spirit. Our heart is ready to receive it. Our eyes are focused on the Word, and we welcome pastors. Amen. 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 Christ. 
Old things are passed away, and all things have become new. You have the nature of God. You are created in His image and in His likeness. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. You are the righteousness of God yes. in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You are in right standing with Him. Yes. You are accepted in the blood. God loves you and nothing can separate oh, you from yeah. His love. Oh, you Jesus. are one with Him yeah. in the name Glory. 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 Glory.
Say, yep, 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 yep. I believe he's talking about you today. And God is saying, surrender that to me, and I'll turn you into a happy person. A grateful person. Yes. But we must surrender. We must yield. Amen? Amen. Because we're being changed into his image. I want to read you some scriptures out of the Passion today. A lot of them are coming out of the Passion. And just for your information, you know, the Passion is no longer on Bible Gateway. Right. And it's one of the main go-tos that I can yes. do a lot. Uh -huh. yes. And what I found out is uh, now it's on the U version. Yes. And what I found out is if you go to the U version and you load it to your phone or your device, mm -hmm. I loaded it to the iPad, our stuff, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. they give you a free version of the, you know, all of the New Testament and then Psalms, Proverbs, Song of Solomon, yep. all of it on the Passion. It's all free. But you can load it. It doesn't take up part of any space on your phone or your device. And I'm telling you, you talk about just making you alive to the Word of God. When you read some of the way the Passion is written, it just brings to life some of these scriptures. It's kind of written poetically, if you would say it that way. And it is so good. Now, I'm going to be reading out a bunch of those scriptures today. Um, Psalm 72, 6, and this is in the Passion. Your favor will fall like rain upon our surrendered lives, like showers reviving the earth. Oh, that's good. Wow. Oh, that's good. Now, so, we all said there's areas of our life that we all have to surrender to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Every one of us. We're all in the same boat together. Um, I remember one of the first things that the Lord by the Holy Spirit ever dealt with me about surrendering. When I was a baby Christian, I was like 19 years old when I really accepted him. I mean, I asked him into my heart when I was 11 years old. But, you know, you don't really know how to live for the Lord when you're that young. But... As, you know, at 19, I rededicated, if you want to say that, and, and, and I really made him Lord of my life. One of the first things the Holy Spirit started dealing with me about is my music. It, um, previously, when I was 18, I was a, a disc jockey at a rock and roll radio station. It was called WCLS. It was here in Phoenix City. Mm -hmm. And so the music that I was listening to, the lyrics that I was accustomed to, weren't going to be feeding my spirit. I mean, those lyrics were in opposition to what I needed in my spirit. And so the Holy Spirit kept dealing with me, and I kept telling him I can't do it. I just can't do it. I can't, I can't do this. Because there really, at that time, there wasn't too many alternatives. There was Southern gospel music as far as Christian music, and there wasn't a whole lot of anything else 40-something years ago. And I wasn't, you understand there's a great difference between rock and roll and Southern gospel. I'm not knocking Southern Gospel. Right. I'm just saying, you're 19 years old. You're. Right. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Amen. Y'all yeah, got it. Amen. Okay, Amen. Got it. okay so I, I finally, the Lord just kept dealing with me, kept dealing with me, and I said, okay, here's the deal. I will, <laughs> I will fast this for 30 days. I'll fast mm -hmm. that music for 30 days. I won't listen to it at all. And I did it, and I never went back. Amen. Now, I'm not telling you you have to, have to do that. Right, or I'm exactly. not. You know, paint you a picture of what you've got to do. I'm telling you that the Lord is going to deal with you in some area. And he's going to do it all your Christian life. Yes, right when you think, praise God, i got this one behind me. The Holy Spirit is right there tapping you on the shoulder and saying, now we got the next one. Hallelujah. No, no, no. That's the, you know, but, but he does that. I mean, that's just the way he does. And, um, okay. Hallelujah. So, the next thing is, uh, I'm going to give you another example. My parents, when they came to the Lord. Now, my mom was saved, and uh, she was in a denominational church, and she you know, took me to church every Sunday. My father rarely ever went, but um, my father was an alcoholic. Uh, my mom and my father were both like chain smokers, and um, they went to a different type of church, and they got on fire for God. I'm talking about the Word of God came alive to them, and they got born again, and they got, I mean, she rededicated, he got born again, and they got, you know, filled with the Spirit. And I'm talking about on fire. I'm talking about my dad reading the Word of God. I mean, he was reading it like crazy all the time. And my mom was the same way. They started having Bible meetings in our house. You know, and I was like, you know, I was always wanting them to get born again. Now I'm thinking, I didn't want to be fanatic, God. They're, 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 they're crazy with this stuff now. You know, I mean, it was just, it was wild in our house because they had prayer meetings in the house, and Oh, wow. But anyway, they went to their church. They got hands laid on them. And 
My mother, who was a chain smoker for over 30 years, she was completely delivered when hands were laid on her, just like that. My father was a chain smoker for that long and an alcoholic for more than that, many more years than that. He was delivered the second hands were laid on him. Now, I understand it doesn't always happen the second hands are laid on you. Mm -hmm. But the second hands are laid on you, you get a measure of the anointing put into you. Amen. And that Amen. measure, you know, you can, sometimes it takes more than one measure sometimes. You understand? It, right. You might get a 30% measure, and then it, it, the next time you get a, another little measure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But it, it, you'll get completely delivered as you walk it out. Amen. You and I will have Amen. to walk it out. Amen. But anyway, they got it instantly, both of them. And so they surrendered. Now, my mom had tried many things uh, to, you know, to give up smoking, and she couldn't do it. And I remember, I don't know if she did this, and I think she did uh, hypnosis, I believe, which is totally opposite of what we believe. Okay, totally opposite of what the Word of God. But she wasn't, you know, uh, a, her eyes of her understanding were enlightened to everything that was she should be doing and should be doing as a Christian. Okay. Then there came out with something, I don't remember if y'all remember this in the 70s. They put a staple in your ear oh. to get you to stop uh, smoking. So she had the staple put in her ear. And, you know, she, she went for a good period of time. And then she started back smoking. So everything that she tried to do in the natural to, you know, to get this off of her, it wouldn't work. The second hands were laid on her, it worked. The power of God entered her body, and, and she immediately was free. My father was immediately free. So, you know, they had to surrender that. Now, that's that's our big problem is surrendering. Thank you very much. I do be quiet. Because the Lord is wanting us to continually surrender things to him. Now, I want you to read this same scripture in the message translation, and I really like it. Then Jesus went to work on his disciples. <laughs> Hang on. That sounds like the Jesus that I know. Yes. You know, through the Holy Spirit. It seems like, I don't think, I really don't think Jesus has got a lot of time to hang out with you guys. The Holy Spirit is so busy trying to get me into the image of Christ. I think he says, you know, I'm going to deal with y'all later, but I'm still busy with pastor right now. I mean, he has more than a full-time job, and I just, I got to deal with him. So, then Jesus went to work on his disciples. The Holy Spirit goes to work on us when we get born again. Anyone who intends to come with me has to let me leave. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. That was the title of our message today. It came straight you know, from the message translation. We think we're in the driver's seat. Let me just let that settle for a minute. Because some people said, you mean I'm not in the driver's seat? Matthew 16, 24 in the Common English Bible. Then Jesus said to his disciples, all who want to come after me must say no to themselves. Yeah. Take up their cross and follow me. Amen. A lot of people don't understand what that word no to themselves means. They say, well, I'm a, I'm a free will moral agent. I can do anything I want to do. Um, but you're going to be a very miserable Christian if you just yeah. to the there Lord. And I, I, I mean, he's just going to constantly deal with us about areas because we're from the time we're born again to the time we go home to be with him, we're going to be surrendering stuff to him, getting more and more into the image of Christ. Get this one in the Passion Translation, Psalms 96 and verse number 7. Surrender to the Lord Yahweh, all you nations and people. Surrender to him all your pride and strength. Yep, yep, yep. I knew it would get real silent. Hallelujah. We've all got pockets of pride. Amen. We all have areas where we're leaning on our own strength. Mm -hmm. He's saying, I want those areas. Mm -hmm. I want you to surrender those areas to me. Um, it's not supposed to be about us anymore. Amen. Right. We can have an ambition for a certain vocation, and the Lord may say, surrender to me. Or he may not. He may say, this is the vocation I've given Amen. to you, but you've got to seek him. We've got to seek him. Amen. I remember I've told this story before, and I'm just going to touch it. Uh, Camera One is where I used to work 40-something years ago. And God told me to quit. And um, he had already impressed on me where I was supposed to go to work. So I knew where to go put in the job application. I knew where I was supposed to work. I was supposed to work at a meal where they made potholders and dish rags. And the last place on this earth that I wanted to work was there. I wanted to do photography and development. I took a couple of quarters in college. And that was the direction 
I had already sent. I'm going this way. But the Lord's funny like that. He'll say, <laughs> surrender this to me because that's not your direction at this time. Mm-hmm. Might not be your direction ever. That's right. So the next thing I know, I'm, I'm you know, working at the place that makes potholders and dish rags because <laughs> that's where God wanted me to work. And you can get very miserable until you get where God wants you to get. That's right. Yeah. Amen. So there's one person in here that's been very miserable, so they know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and the rest of y'all, I, I can foresee some of y'all are headed, headed to misery. <laughs> unless, unless there's a great deal of surrender going on over here. Hallelujah. <laughs> the reason God wanted me to work at the place that made potholders is uh, God had a young man that worked there. And he needed that young man to mentor me. Mm. And I wound up working right beside him. But I had to yield and to surrender to the Lord's will. Let me tell you, I wouldn't be standing here today. I would not be pastoring a church today if I hadn't have surrendered that one step, that one thing. If I hadn't surrendered, it would have altered my entire life. That's a fact. Hallelujah. I would not be here today in this spot. That Hallelujah. Not a chance, because I didn't go to this spot anyway. I wasn't going to go this way. But the Lord has ways of changing yes, he does. the way we perceive Hallelujah. things, the way we look yes, at things, the way... We, we start looking at it. Really, you think so, God? I think I might I might be you know, prone to go the way you want me to go now. <laughs> yep, I'm almost well done. I've been in the fire for a long time. I'm almost well done. I believe, right. I believe matter of fact, some of me, I believe it's more than well done. Yeah. I, think, I think it's time, God. Let's just pull me out of this fire now. I'm ready. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm ready to do your will. Yes. See, that wasn't my will. It wasn't my plan, but it was. Hallelujah. So we may have plans, and that's not a bad thing, but we need to run them by God. Amen. First, run them by God. Any future plans you have, run them by God first. Surrender them to God, because it's not about us. I heard Jerry Seville many years ago talking about he's going to get married to his wife, Carolyn. He's, he's fixing to marry her the next day. And she said, uh, just want to let you know, she said, you know, she was born again, spirit filled, and he was opposed to all that kind of stuff. And he, he didn't go to church, you know, unless she drug him to church. And said, uh, she just said, I want you to know that uh, I have prayed and prayed and prayed, and I know that the man that I'm going to marry, you know, which is Jerry, is going to be a missionary, going to have a big work in Africa of uh, missions. He's going to be an evangelist all over the world. And, um, you know, she's telling them this, the, you know, right before they get married. And he said, undoubtedly, you're marrying the wrong man. Because that's not who I am. That's not what I'm going to do. And he said, uh, I'm going to race cars for a living. And I'm going to repair cars for a living. And that's all I'm going to do with my life. And, and if you're going to be with me, you're going to be at the racetrack. That's where you're going to be. And she said, all you do is you go to the wedding tomorrow and you say, I do. Uh, me and God will take care of the rest. <laughs> he, said, me and God. he said, what? She, he said, what, I, I, I understand the power of intercessory prayer. And she said, me and God will take care of the rest. You just, you just go and say, I do. Right. Wow. It's sad. Wow. Okay. And so he did. And now you know he has this huge work yes, in Africa. Does. He preaches all over the world. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so when we say Jesus is our Lord. Mm. Now, I know a lot of people ask Jesus in their heart. But you know that word Lord, it, it actually means boss. Yes. So it means yes. he's calling the shots. Yes. Actually, it means we don't have the right to call the shots without him. He, he's got to tell us. You know, we got to ask him. we got to surrender to him. But, but he's got to let us. we got to choose from him, not uh-huh. our own self. That's good. Um, so we must learn to surrender to the will of God in any and every area of our life. And when we do, his grace begins to flow. And peace will take the place of any fear that we may feel. Um, calmness, peace. I didn't say you won't have negative thoughts because you will. But God is in control when we surrender. But he's not in control until we surrender. Uh-huh. Okay, I'm going I'm to kick over a quick sacred cow, really quick. I hear this all the time. I hear well, you know, if it's God's will, it'll happen. That's the biggest lie that was ever told. Right. I said, it's God's will that a lot of things happen that don't happen That's because right. people don't surrender to the will That's of God. Right. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
God's will is that every man be saved. That's what the Word of God tells us, but every man won't be saved. There are people now in hell because they, they didn't get saved. Why is that? If it's God's will that all men be saved, because they had free will, and they let their will guide them down a path that God never intended for them to go. And that path ended in death or premature death or, or it ended in you know tragic things. And why is that? Because that wasn't God's will. That wasn't God's path. But they chose that path. That's right. Amen. Amen. You know, people, okay, I'm, I'm going to stay on the side of the for a stay second. There. People like, you know, i, I got to clean myself up before I come to the Lord. I, you know, because this will keep you out of heaven and that will keep you out of heaven. There's only one sin that will keep anybody out of heaven. That's the sin of rejecting Jesus yeah. Christ. Amen. Amen. It, it, it's, it's not about all this other yeah. stuff. Yeah. God will take care of that by the Holy Spirit. Come on. In time. Come on. Yes. 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 But the yes. sin of rejecting Jesus Christ. Well, I'll wait. I'll, I'll just know. You better not. You better get right now. Amen. 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 Especially in the day and time we live in. Yes. You better get right now. Yes. You, you, know, you, you may not wake up tomorrow morning. That's we right. don't know that any of us is going. And I'm not talking about anything. I'm talking about anything that's going on in the world. Right. We better be right now. That's right. Amen. You know, you just can't be on a church roll. Come on. And you can't be just a pastor of a church or deacon of a church or, or singing in the choir. I'm telling you, you better be born again. A personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you don't, there's a lot of people that are in churches, sitting on pews, preaching from the pulpit, but they're going to die and go to hell. That's right. Thank you very much. It's about a real relationship with God. You've got a real relationship with God. Nobody has to beg you to do stuff. Nobody has to beg you to serve God. Excuse me? We talk to each other. We, we you know, encourage one another. But nobody has to beg you. Because right. it's about what's on the inside of you. I, I don't have to be begged to read this word. I want to read this word. It is life to me. It infuses me with strength. Yes. Come on, Pastor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may say, well, Pastor, I see so many failures and shortcomings in your life. I see so many areas in your own life that don't measure up. Areas where you haven't surrendered. That is so very true. Yes. Yes. And I'm sure it's much worse than what you see. All right. <laughs> but I don't teach this from the standpoint that I've arrived. There you go. Right. I don't teach it. I Hallelujah. I'm daily learning how to surrender to him and to his will. Please give me grace. Yeah. I surrender yeah. to him. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I'll give you grace as you surrender. Yeah. 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 God wants first place in our lives. He doesn't want to be an afterthought. But we must surrender for him to be first place. Not my will, but yours be done. So there's the surrender the worry. Surrender the fear. Surrender the outcome of certain situations that we worry about. Surrender your future to the Lord. Surrender some of the places that you go. The Holy Spirit will tell you, don't go there. Uh -huh. <sighs> some of the people you hang out with. Cut them loose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Cut them loose. That's exactly, that was exactly the word of the Lord. Cut them loose. Cut them loose. There's some people. Right. He's going to say, you, I want Hallelujah. you to be separate. I want, I want you to Bad cut those people friend. loose. Because if Bad you don't, friend. it's going to affect your walk with God. And guess what? If you don't cut them loose, you're not going to have there a you walk go. with God. Right. That's what the Holy Spirit is saying, cut them loose. Uh -huh. Not because he doesn't love them, not because he doesn't uh -huh. love you. Because he does love you, he's pulling you to him. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He'll deal with you about the way you dress. He'll deal with you about the way you talk. Yes. He'll deal with you. He'll, he'll ask you to surrender the way you respond in certain situations. Yes. Yes. I know, you know, I've said it over and over. One of the things he's dealing with me about is going slow, slower, and slowest. <laughs> and stop giving commentary. Okay. One of the biggest things yeah. where I get into it is commentary. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know what I think? It don't matter. It don't matter. Shut up. Hallelujah. I'm talking to me. I'm learning. I'm talking to me. I need yeah. to be quiet. And the Holy Spirit is telling me, be quiet. Stop giving that commentary when you don't need to be giving that commentary. Hallelujah. It may be true, but is it edifying? There you Amen. go. Is it edifying? Amen. Yeah. There you go. Amen. Because people say, well, I, gave that, I, I said that because, you know, it's the truth. Well, it, it don't matter if it's the truth. Does it build somebody up or does it tear somebody down? That's your heart. Hallelujah. Yes. I don't know where all this comes from. It's the Holy Spirit. Keep going. 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 Keep going.
Yes. I don't know about you guys, but my language, he had to clean my language up. Mm -hmm. I used yeah. to cuss. <laughs> and the reason y'all were smiling because y'all used to cuss too. Uh -huh. Some of y'all might be smiling because y'all still cuss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is good. There's good stuff right here. Some of y'all just got the revelation. You mean I can't cuss? <laughs> Version. It said, Jesus said to his followers, if any of you want to be my follower, you must stop thinking about yourself and what you want. You must be willing to carry the cross that is given to you for following me. If any of you try to save your life, you will have you will lose it. But if you give up your life for me, you'll find true life. So surrender it to God. Amen. Who Amen. is in the driver's seat? You are God.
God, a champion for him. It says, I subdue my body and get it under control so that after I preach the good news to others, I myself won't be disqualified. And then I want to read that scripture also in the NIV and the New uh, International Version. It says, no, I strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave. So that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Oh, that's We're good. all running for the prize, yes. are we? Yes. We're all running this race for the prize. And that is to be with our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. And so we want we have to we have to be strict with our bodies, don't we? Amen. We can't just follow what our bodies want that's to right. do. That's right. Can't just follow what our mind says. We've got to line up with this, what this says, amen? Line up with what the Word of God says. Follow the path that God is leading yes. us on. Yes. He's going to uh, direct us in the right path. Yes. He's going to direct us in the path of peace and the path of joy, the path that is best for our lives, amen? Yes. Yes. amen. And you know, we can't go by how other people are doing things. Thank you. We can't go by how other people are, are, are living. We can't give ourselves permission to do what other people are doing right. or act the way other people are acting. That's right. Well, you know, I know uh, so-and-so is a Christian, and they're doing such and such, so I can do such and no, such. No, you can't. That's right. Have you talked to the Lord about it? That's right. Have, have, you, have you gotten direction from him? Amen. 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 You know, a lot of people will uh, say, uh, they, they find little ways to kind of criticize the Christian, you know. Well, all y'all do is go to church. And well, all y'all do is go to ball games, uh -huh. which is nothing wrong with it, but the same rule applies, amen? amen. God right. is leading you to live your life a different way than he's leading amen. other people to live their life, right. amen? amen? So we are to be directed. Our life is to be directed by the Lord. Yes. Good. That's, you know, and, and we have to surrender things. There are some things in our lives that we know that we're supposed to surrender to God. But we are allowing our flesh to direct us. We're all, uh, allowing our mind, our intellect, our intelligence, so to speak, direct us. But no, we need, there are certain things we need to surrender to the Lord. And you know, the sad thing is that some, so many times we hold on to some things we know we're supposed to surrender, but we've held on to it so long that we don't even recognize it anymore. That's true. We don't That's even true. realize it. So, you know, we, at one time, God dealt with me very strongly in this area that I am to surrender it. I'm to yield it. I'm to give it up. But we have allowed it over and over and over to go past us, to go up, up, around us and not go in us to where we surrendered it, and now we don't even recognize that is a bad place to be. It is. We don't want to be in that place, amen? amen. And you know, the more you say no to God, the more you say no to the Holy Spirit, right. the less you're going to hear it. That's right. He's still urging you. That's He's right. still drawing you. He's amen. still speaking to you. Uh -huh. But you have closed it off. You've That's closed right. yourself right. off to what God is saying. Hallelujah. So what has God told you to surrender this morning. Think about that. What has he uh, dealt with you to surrender in your life? There's things there. There are things there that you know that you're supposed to surrender he to him. And Luke chapter 9 and verse 23, and this is the Passion Translation. <coughs> Jesus said to all of his followers, are you a follower of Jesus? Amen. 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 He said to all of his followers, if you truly desire to be my disciple, you must disown your own life completely. Embrace my cross as your own and surrender to my ways. Surrender to his ways, not any longer our ways. We like to have our way, don't we? Our, our flesh likes to have our way. Uh, but to live for Christ, we've got to embrace his ways. Yes. Embrace the cross. Lay down some things in your life that God has spoken to you about. Amen? Amen. Take your hands off of the wheel. Uh -huh. oh, Take your good. hands off that's of the good. wheel. That's good. And surrender to the Lord's ways. You know, that's where our battle comes in as a Christian. 
We want to live a godly life. We want to live for the Lord. But yet we want to hold on to this out here. We want to hold on to things that God has told us to let go of. And then we're in a battle. We're in a struggle. We're in a tug of war. And that's where we come in with conflict in our spirits. Amen? In our inner man, in our soul. There's a conflict going on. But when you surrender to God, when you surrender it all to Him, amen, there's that joy, there's that peace, amen, you're settled on the inside. Yes. That's where the Lord wants us to be. Mm -hmm. Letting, you know, letting the wrong things in shuts the door to God. Yes. Uh It shuts the door to what the Lord wants to do in our lives, you know. So, uh, you know, we allow things in that we shouldn't allow in. And it shuts that door when we allow things in. And then, you know, it shuts the door to the power of God mm-hmm. in your life. That's right. It's not that he doesn't want to help you. It's not that he doesn't want to direct you. It's not that he doesn't want uh, to do all, the, uh, all good things in your life. Amen. But when we are being uh, uh, rebellious or when we have that fear of totally surrendering things to God, you know, we, we, we're, we're losing control. Uh-huh. I've been there. Amen. We've all been there. We want to be in control of certain things. But God's saying, no, let him be in control of everything. Amen. Amen. Let him have the steering wheel. Let him have the will. Amen. Yeah, and he will direct you in a way that will bring you that peace and that joy that you're so longing our spirit is longing for that, amen? amen? And there is nothing like living totally free, amen? amen. Totally amen. free, totally giving ourselves to God, nothing like it. Amen. So we need to uh, shut out the wrong things, amen? We don't want to short-circuit the power of God. I don't know about you, but I need all the circuits flowing, amen? I need all the power of God in my life that I can get. I need to yield everything to Him that is holding me back, amen? I need to give it all to God. Amen, amen. Don't hold anything back. Don't short-circuit the power of God in your life, amen? And I know I read this scripture quite often, but this is the answer to so many things that we deal with in life. It's Proverbs 4, 20 through 27. And this is the King James, and then I want to read it in another translation after that. So Proverbs 4, 20 through 27 says, My son, attend to my word, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and help to all their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. It's a heart thing. We've got to guard our heart. We've got to watch our heart. Amen? Amen. So 24 says, Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on. Focus, focus. Don't be distracted by all this stuff out here. Amen. Keep your eyes look straight on. And let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the path of thy feet. And let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. You know, we've got to keep our eyes on that path that God has got for us. Yes. You know, um, you know the, the Word of God says that in the last days that even the elect will be deceived. Yes. We have to keep our eyes straight on the path God's got us. I don't want to be deceived. Amen? Amen. You don't want to be deceived. Amen. We've got to uh, be uh, aware of what is pulling on us, distracting us. You know, uh, we don't want to be more like the world. The Christian doesn't right. want to be more like the world. We want to be more like Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. We want to be more like our Amen. Savior. Amen. So what are you attending to? That is what I want to ask you today. What are you attending to? Same scripture, Proverbs 4, 20 through 27, and this is the Passion Translation. It says, listen carefully, my dear child. To everything that I teach you, 
and pay attention to all that I have to say. Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life. They will impart true life, amen, and radiant health into the very core of your being. So above all, guard the affections of your heart. Guard the affections of your heart. Amen. What are you attending to? Yes. Guard the affections of your heart. Yes. For they affect all that you are. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being. For, for from there flows the wellspring of life. Avoid dishonest speech and pretentious uh, words. Be free from using perverse words no matter what. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose, looking straight ahead. Ignore life's distractions. Hallelujah. Watch where you are going. Stick to the path of truth, and the road will be safe and smooth before you. Don't allow yourself to be sidetracked for even a moment, or take the detour that leads to darkness. Amen? Hallelujah. So what are we Hallelujah. attending to today? What do you have on your mind today? You know, what you've got on your mind is what you are attending to. Amen? What is in your heart today? Amen? Are you looking more to what's going on in the world and wanting and having that uh, pull to do what the rest of the world are doing, is doing? Or do you have your attention on the Lord, on Jesus Christ, amen, on that path he's got us on? We need to have our attention. We need to attend more to him, amen? Draw from him today. You know, there's areas in your life where you need breakthrough. Pastor got that word this morning about breakthrough. We need, we all need a breakthrough in some area of our life. That's every one of us. So, you know, that surrendering to God is the answer to the beginning of your breakthrough. Right. Yes. You can't go That's any good. further. You're That's just right. kind of stuck where you're at until you surrender it to God. Amen? Surrender to the Lord. You know, taking your hands off of the wheel. Taking your hands off of the will of your life, amen, and giving the will to the Lord. There's where your answer is. That's the answer to your breakthrough, amen. That's where you stop the struggle. You stop the struggle of the flesh. You stop the struggle of the mind. You stop the struggle of the enemy, amen. Breakthrough. And then John chapter 3 and verse 30 in the Living Bible says, he must become greater and greater, and I must become less and less. Amen? Now, what a revelation John had. You know John the Revelator? Yeah. He had a revelation, amen? He must decrease, and God must increase. And, you know, the more that you give control to God, the better off you're going to be. Yeah. Amen. The better off, the more control God has the better off in every area of your life you'll be. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise Hallelujah. God. But I don't know about you. Hallelujah. I want to live more for Jesus. Amen. Amen. I want to have him more in my life every day. Not less and less, but more and more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to give him more control over my life. Amen. 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 More areas of my life that I want to give him control of. I want him to steer my life. Amen. 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 So I want to give God free access to me. Free access uh -huh. to my life. Amen. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. Free access. So I need to surrender to him everything that he is dealing with me to, to surrender about. And as Pastor said, that's an every day of our life thing. So I'll always be saying to myself, well, you know, I've got it now. I've got it. I have got it down pat. And then lo and behold, something comes up. Right. And the uh, old man wants to flare up. Amen. And so there you are again. I got to surrender this. 
you know, they pushed my button and I got in the bed. <laughs> now I've got to surrender this. And that's okay. God, he's a merciful God. He is merciful. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I don't want to shut the door to God. I don't want to shut the door to his power. I like greater peace. I like greater joy in my life, don't you? Yes. Amen. And I'll end with this scripture here. Romans 14 and 17 in the New Living Translation says, For the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's where we want to live right there. Praise God. We want to live in that goodness and that peace and that joy in the Holy Ghost.